Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just run through the um, PSF PDB formation steps uh, from week two. I'm just going to download a uh, small protein from the protein data bank and make a matched PSF and PDB pair. Um, you have to do this in segments, and the, the PDB files at the protein data bank are not really set up for simulations. They're set up for other things, maybe just from data, so we have to match them up. Notice what I have here. I have my windows all arranged. I have a finder window, which is sitting in the directory, which happens to be called week two, that I'm working in. I have a terminal window. This is a normal terminal. It's also in that directory. I've opened up the TKCon, right? And it's also in that directory, right? And when I'm in a terminal or a TKCon, I can use the CD command to change the directory um, to the directory I want to be in. This is the VMD um, messaging window, useful to tell me if the, in case VMD needs to tell me anything. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, download the leucine zipper from the protein data bank, mol pdb load 1pgb. Here it is. Let's make this a representation that we can actually um, see what's going on here. We'll color it by secondary structure. Now this um, this molecule has crystalline water stuck in it and we can't see it in the cartoon representation because water doesn't have a representation in the cartoon but if I type if I make a water selection and then um, go to CPK um, I can see the water molecules as these little spheres. So basically what I need to do is separate the waters out from the protein and give them each their own kind of segment in my simulation file. So that's really the goal that we're doing here. Um, so the what, first thing I'm going to do is select only the protein. I'm going to do that in the TKCon um, so I can manipulate the molecule. So I set, set PGB atom select. Now what, I can, what I'm doing now is I'm hitting the tab key. Hitting the tab key is auto completion. And th these, are the, these are the different commands that start with Adam, and it's showing me how I can auto complete this. This is really useful if you're lazy um, in typing like I am. So I just hit Adam S E L and hit tab, and it completed it for, the, for me. So I say Adam select top protein. Right? It tells me it's made a selection. Now what I want to do is write just the protein part to a new file. 1pgb new pdb. Right? Now watch this window because it's going to show up here. That's why I have the finder window so I can make sure it's being written. And we can see that's there and it's not zero, right? It's not a zero size file. If it was zero I, I would uh, zero size, I would know I was doing something wrong. All right, so now I'm ready to um, make a PSF file from my PDB file. Okay, the first thing I have to do is load the PSF gem package. Package require PS, PSF gem. Now it returns this number. That's the version number of the package. Um, if it couldn't find the package, it would return an error. If it gives you a number like this, it tells you the version number of the package. Now, what I have to do is tell it where the topology file is. And since I've since I've loaded this right in the directory, I I type topology space top tab, and it auto completes it for me. Now, when I hit return here, it's going to give me a bunch of messages. Right? It shows me the header of that topology file to make sure that this is the header I want to use or the file I want to use. Okay. Now the other thing we have to do that's listed is we have to alias an atom because it turns out that um, certain atom names and common names in PDB files are not known by the simulation program. In this case PDB alias atom. It's in the isoleucine residue if it's there so it's basically converting any occurrences of, C of CD1, a carbon, 
as an atom name to CD. That's just kind of a safe thing. Now, what I want to do is I want to make the PSF segment. This is pretty simple um, if it's a small protein, right? You just name it segment main. This name, main, could be anything you want it to be. I'm just calling it main. You have to do an open brace. And you could continue typing a command here, but what I like to do is um, type it as if I was actually writing a program file, right? So I hit return and nothing happens, nothing should happen because it's waiting for the next command. PDB1, PGB, we want to use our PDB file we've just created. I'm going to hit return again. Now when I close the bracket and hit return, notice that when I close the bracket, it kind of highlighted it. That's telling me that um, it's matching my bracket pairs. That's kind of a programming thing that's kind of nice. Now when I hit return, it's going to give me a message. Okay. Um, don't worry about anything that says info, you don't have to worry about. If it says error, then you have to worry about it, okay? Notice up here that the VMD window gave me a little message too. Main starts at 1 and it ends at 56. There's 56 residues, right? That matches what it says here. So I leave all this stuff open as kind of a consistency check. All right, now what we're going to tell it to do is we're going to tell it to... Um, associate the coordinates from the PDB file with this segment, right? This is now all internal to the program right now because we haven't written anything out. But we're now going to tell the program that the coordinates for our new segment main are going to come from this PDB file. Chord PDB 1 PG GB new PDB main, right? So we're telling it to associate the, P, the coordinates from the PDB file from our PDB we just created to this segment we've created called main. Now, it's going to give you some warnings on the ends, either 1 and or 56, because patching, um, the ends can be treated a little bit differently depending on what you want to do. I don't want you to worry about this at this point. We'll learn about patching a little bit later. Now what we're going to do is we're going to have it guess coordinates. If there's any coordinates that weren't set like these, we're going to try to guess them. Um, if it says they're poorly guessed, it doesn't really matter. Okay. Um, it just That might cause us problems or they just might be crappy coordinates. We don't know yet. Now what I want to do is I want to write my new PDB. Right now the PDB is just stored internally. 1 PGB fixed PDB. Right now up here we can see that it's there. And now I'm going to use the up arrow key to do the next command and just edit it. Right, So I'm going to do up arrow which recalls the last command and I'm going to edit what I just typed and replace all my PDBs with PSF, right? And you can see that it gave me some information and the PSF file is here too. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to make sure that this file is, is correct and it's going to work. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to load these files. mol load PSF 1 PGB fixed PSF PDB 1 PGB fixed PDB. So see what I'm doing here. I'm telling it to load a molecule. The PSF file is this file. The PDB file is this file. Now, if I come over here, I can see now I have two molecules. Here's, here's a couple things I want you to notice. Let me turn off the first one. Okay, there's our molecule. The representation now, the, the molecule that's selected, is our new one we've just loaded. Let me create a representation and see if there's any waters here. Now there shouldn't be, right? Because we told it not to include the water. So here's my selection, water, and their van der Waals spheres, but there's nothing there, right? So let me go ahead and delete that rep. Let me turn the other one back on. I've made this one Vanderwalls. Let me make this CPK. 
Okay, so there's our molecule. If we do new cartoon, we can see the representation looks the same, but I want to make it CPK. Now there's a reason I want to make it CPK. Let's look at this. Our original PDB had 460 atoms. Our new one has 855. What is going on here? Well, let's look at this carefully. Let me turn off my new one, turn on my old one. Let me change this just to protein. Up, oh, wrong one. Let me go back to my original one. I've selected it now. Let me turn off the water. Let me select my protein. Now let me represent this in CPK. Do you notice, oh, let me make it by name. Do you notice anything here? Let's turn the other one back on. Oh, I turned them both off. That's what I did. Okay, so now, well, first of all, the coordinates are superimposed, right? So we're at, it looks like there's only one structure, but there's really two. Let me turn off my new one. Do you notice anything? The new structure has hydrogens, and the old one doesn't. Can you think of a reason why this is? Well, most, well, not most, many protein structure files from the protein data bank come from NMR or crystal x-ray structures. X-rays ignore hydrogens. They cannot see hydrogens because they're not massive enough to balance x-rays. So what you end up with in a PDB file from the RCSB is no hydrogens. Well, this is actually not a problem because hydrogens are so small and pretty much insignificant Right? They just really cap valences. Then one of the things that the PSF generator will do is just stick hydrogens wherever they're needed. That's kind of nice. We'll see this later too when we work with MMTSB. MMTSB does the same thing. Okay, so uh, that was just a really quick introduction to using the TKCon to create a matched PSF PDB pair uh, so you can do a simulation from this. We actually should do the same thing for the water, but we'll do that in another, in another step.